So hello, once again, welcome to Scratch Track. Today we're going to look at functions uh, so that we're able to understand how functions work and how we can be able to use them in our projects to be able to come up with different things, either when you're working on your animation, your stories, or even your games in Scratch. So we're going to look at functions and then at the end of the session, we'll be able to understand what they are and how we can be able to use them. So welcome. Uh, once again, this is Sylvia from Ayan. And please feel free to introduce yourself. Let us know which school you're representing and ask questions, any questions that you have concerning Scratch or your project. And also let us know the projects you're working on so that we can be able to help you in any way that you need support. So thank you. So functions. So when we talk about functions, we are talking about how you can be able to group your codes or your blocks in a way that you give them a name and they be able to perform a specific task. And you can, at, at the same time, you can be able to reuse it or be able to use it in different ways or as many as many times as possible that you want them so we're going to be able to create a group of blocks we group them together and then we have to give them a name so the name should be a bit relevant to what those blocks are going to be doing so that we are able to be able to reuse our that block or to be able to use it in different way different parts of our project when we are working on a project. So this will help you in reducing repetition. Sometimes you keep repeating the same thing, but while if you group it and give it a name, what we call in a function, you can be able to just call it and use it at any particular time that you need it in your project. If it's a story or an animation or a game. So that's what we mean when you talk about functions. So being able to create a group of blocks of codes and give it a name so that it performs a specific task. And then we can be able to reuse it to avoid repetition and all that. So for example, maybe I can give an instance to explain what we mean by these functions. So when we're working with computers as we've been doing when you're coding, we, we say we have to give the computer specific instructions, one instruction after the other, so that it's able to understand what you're trying to tell it to do. But now when we use a function, it helps us to give that specific instruction using just one name or one block while we know at the back of that block what that block is doing, what task is our block performing. So a simple example of a function we can use for in Scratch that we've been working with is, for example, the say block. Once you call the say block, most of the time you just call it and then you give it an instruction. You tell it what you want it to say. So we don't know what is behind the say block, but we know it is instructed such that once you use it, it is able to get the input that you type on the space and then it's able to give you the output and it gives the output on the screen. So once you click on the flag, as we've said here, when you click on flag, the green flag, say hello for two seconds. So it's able to print the word hello for us because this block is meant to say things. It can say anything you, any input you type in this space where we've typed hello, it can be able to output it on our screen. So that's how functions work. So we give, we combine a group of blocks to be able to perform a specific task, and then we just call it, and it's an, it's able to do that task at that particular time or point that we are calling it. So functions have, we said we have to define what we want our function to do. So what is that task that you want to be done? For example, when we were creating our games, we were creating a block for moving up, moving forward, moving backwards, moving down, moving up and down, left and right that way. So to avoid 
moving that movement every time we go to the different levels. Remember, we introduced levels in our previous session. And once you move from one level to the other, you still want the same kind of movement to be used. So to avoid that repetition of creating the movement every time, we can create a function and maybe we call it moving up. So every time we need to move up, we just call that one block called move up so that we're able now, it's able to instruct the character or the sprite to move in the direction that we want it to move through. So we, one thing you need to understand clear about function, we must define what we want our function to be able to do. Then the other thing, we need to give our function a name so that we able to call it in real life. Everybody has a name, every item has a name, every place has a name. So why do we use names? So that we're able to call the function or so that we're able to refer to that specific name that we've used. So just the way we use names in real life situation, the same way we are able to use names to, to name our function so that once we start calling them, it is very easy for us to be able to call them. Then the other thing, when you're creating your function, you need to define how how many inputs is it going to have. For example, in our in this function of the same block, this block is taking how many inputs? It has two. So it's taking the text input of what you want to say or what you want your sprite to say. And at the same time, it is taking an input of time. For how long is it supposed to say these words? So those are two inputs where we have one as a text and the other one is in form of numbers where we're given the timing that we need, the time we need to take when saying these two, these words that we type here. So that's what we mean when we talk about how many inputs will your function take. So you need to give it, if you want one input, just for example, if you only want to say, say hello without the timing, we are only going to have one input, which is what do we want to say? So we must have, you must dictate how many inputs your function should take. And lastly, we look at what type of inputs, what type of inputs do you want your text to be able to take? So what type of inputs do you want your function to take. So like in our example here, we've said we have two inputs. So the first input is taking the text, which is the hello, or it can even text jumbo, it can even say, how are you doing? So that is text. But for the other one, it's taking numbers. So we cannot have text here. It's not going to work the way we want. It is not going to give us the timing that we want we remember when we we're also looking at the different blocks, we also have other types of input like the Boolean inputs. We're going to look at that shortly once we switch to Scratch interface. So this type of text that you need to dictate your function, is it going to be using text? Is it going to be using numbers? Is it going to be using Boolean? So you need to specify what you want your function to do. So those are the four main elements we need to know about our function. So once we have to define what we want our function to do. Secondly, we must give it a name so that it's easy for us to call it or to remember to, if you want to use it, you need to remember how do you, how are you going to call that function? So we need a name to be able to call it. Thirdly, you need to define how many inputs will your function take and lastly the type of input the type of input that we need in your function so we're going to create functions in scratch using what we call my blocks or make a block so we've been looking at different types of different types of blocks in Scratch. So we're able to look at the motion blocks. We've looked at looks, we've looked at sounds. 
we've been able to look at events, control blocks. So we've looked at motion blocks. Then we've been able to look at the looks where we can, like the, what I was talking about. So we are saying a say block is an example of a function because it dictates that it takes in input and it's able to print for you the output that you want. So if you wanted to say hello, it's going to say hello. And then it has different inputs, like this one has two. If I use this one, it only has one input, which is hello. So this has two inputs, this has only one input. So when we talk about the Boolean inputs, we are talking about these kind of inputs. So the ones that have the ax here, because they give a specific state. So it's either this or that, yes or no, true or false. So even under the operators, we have them. Like you see this, it's either this value, it's greater than 50. You don't have any other option. It's either this or not. So those are the Boolean values. So it can either be a text, a number, or a Boolean. So once you have a Boolean, you have the option to use the operators or the different sensing blocks to be able to give an input type in your block. Then, so we're looking at the different blocks that we've been able to look at. So yesterday, the previous session, we looked at variables or data, that is variables and lists. So today we're going to look at the make a block or my block. So we're going to create a block which is going to be a function so that we understand how do we create functions and how can we be able to use them. So we go to my blocks and then we click on make a block. So once you click on the make a block, we have the different options that we have down here. So in the first one that I'm highlighting right now, we have the input type. So remember we said your block needs a name. That's why it's saying block name. And then we need to decide what kind of input do you need. And then your input can be a number or a text or a boolean as we said, and it can also be a label. What do we mean by labels? So labels, I'll show an example of a label. So for example, when you talk about, yes, these blocks, such kind of blocks, they're just labels. They help us to give a specific instruction. We label in show, we want you to hide, we want you to show. So those are the labels we're talking about. So for the input, the text or, so make a block, so the input we decide, and then now it can also be a label just to display or to say something. So that's it. So we're going to do an example so that this is clear. And please ask any questions where you find any information is not clear so that we're able to explain it better to all of you. So, yes. So we're going to, let me delete this sprite so that we have a clean page so that we start from there. So we're going to create a, a simple project, for example, an activity of someone, the normal process when you wake up, what do you do when you wake up? So we're going to use that simple storyline to be able to create functions and see how can we be able to use this function in this small example. So we're going to create a project, a simple definition of someone uh, a simple illustration of someone daily routine, how they wake up and what they do once they wake up.
and then you can be able to understand how we can be able to use the different functions or how you can be able to create your own function in your own project. So I'm going to choose a backdrop of a, a bedroom. Yeah, so we have a bedroom so that we can see someone waking up. Then we need to add a sprite or a character in our project. So who is going to be our character? So let's use, let's deal with Danny. So I'm going to click on Danny, then I'm going to go to costumes and I'm going to pick this costume, costume number three. So that's what we are going to use today. Then, so we need to see how Danny wakes up and then what he does when he wakes up. So for example, we can add another backdrop to show once Danny wakes up that he's able to go to either to the kitchen and be able to decide what they want to eat. So I'm going to add some backdrops in my category. So we have the bedroom, then we have the kitchen where he's going to the fridge to see what's there, maybe to have breakfast. And then maybe we can add another one where after that he goes out to play. So how do we get that? So maybe we get an outdoor area to show that it's going out to play. So maybe we can use this one. Yes, to represent a field. So that's it. So we have those three events. So my storyline should move from the bedroom to the kitchen where they're going to the fridge and see what is in, the, in store to eat. And then lastly, they go out to play. So we need to create our own blocks to give functions of a, a few things. So I'm going to start by giving a, the process of waking up. So we want Danny to be able to wake up and move to the kitchen and then later be able to go out. So how do we do that? So we're going to create a block which is going to help Danny wake up and then we're going to create another block for another block function for Danny deciding what he's going to have for breakfast. Yeah, those two can be good. So let's try that. So we go to my make, my blocks, then we click on make a block. So we want a block that is going to be used to wake up and to decide what to eat. So what kind of a block are we going to make? Is it an input block or is it just a label? So because we want just to wake up, waking up cannot have a an input, so we're going to use a label so that now we give we give we group several blocks to be able to be used as the process of waking up. So I'm going to call it wake up block. So remember we said functions need a name. So that is my the name of my function, which is wake up, and I want it to be a a label. So that's it, wake up. Then I click OK. So what happens once I do that? So I have two things happening. I have, I need to define wake up and I, I already have the wake up block here. As you can see, it's a label. So here it is, our label for the wake up block. And then this is where we need to define what, what do we mean by waking up? What do we mean by wake up? So how do we define wake up? So the process of waking up is coming out of bed and maybe standing or making your bed, all that process of how do you wake up? So that's what we're going to define here. So remember we said when you're working with functions, you have to define what do you want your function to do? So for my case, I want my function to be able to 
once I, I click, I, I use when flag is clicked and I tell it, wake up. So once I click on that, it should be able to, we should be able to see the process of Danny being able to wake up and maybe go to the kitchen. So can we start now the process of defining waking up? So I'm going to start with giving the size of Danny. So we can have different costumes of Danny. So I click on Danny and then we go to costumes. So we can add more costumes and Danny maybe when he's sleeping. So I'm going to upload a few costume. And another one. Upload. When he's sitting down here yeah, in the bed. So that's it. So let's come back here. Our blog. It was wake up. So we need to define now what do we mean by wake up? So we want first it gives the size of Danny. What size do we want him to be? So I can use a hundred percent. Then which costume do I want and where do I want it positions? So that is under looks. We get the costume that we need. So in our case, we need the sleeping position. So that is costume C2. So I'm going to call it C2. So then I position the guy in bed so that we can see him sleeping. As you can see, so we are trying to put him in bed so that he can sleep. And he's not going to get covered by bed sheets. <laughs> he's going to sleep on top of the bed. He's just resting. Yes. So we position him where we want. Once we get the position, so we, we fix the position using the go to with the X and the Y variables. So you pick this using the x coordinate and the y coordinate so that every time the game starts your character or your sprite is sleeping in a in that specific position that you want him to be sleeping all the time when it's starting so make sure you get it right so let's see so is that the position we want so if that's what we want so we put it there so he's sleeping there. So once we dictate that, so we make sure also we are in the right backdrop, which is the bedroom. So remember, we had a list of backdrops. If I click on backdrops, we have this backdrop. We have this other one and then we have this. So we must make sure we are in the right backdrop. So how do we do that? So we also tell the backdrop. Which backdrop do we want? So switch backdrop to backdrop. Bedroom three, that is the name of our backdrop. And then. Now we, we start now the process of waking up. So what do we want him to wake up? How do we want him to wake up? So maybe you can have him making some sound snoring while sleeping so we can get a sound snoring yes and then i'm going to trim my sound so that i only have that short sound of someone snoring So we have the sound snoring. So I come back here and then I choose. I want the person to, to be snoring. And then once they're done snoring, maybe we can have an alarm waking them up. So they can hear an alarm. 
So how do we know he's hearing an alarm? So maybe we can say. So an alarm rings. We can even put some sound for the alarm. So we got sounds, pick sounds, any sound that you'd love to use as your alarm tone. So mine, I'm going to use that one. So we are trying to describe the process of waking up. Remember, we are defining, defining, define wake up. So we are defining wake up so that once we click on wake up, it just does the process for us. We don't have to now to repeat all this code of waking up. Then what else do you do when you wake up? Some people just start yawning. So maybe we can have Dan yawn, Danny yawning so that we see he's really sleeping. So we need to see him changing position from sleeping to sitting down and then maybe he can yawn so that he gets out of bed as most people do. Though some people just wake up and get out of bed. So we are different. So in this case, you're going to make him change position by maybe sitting down. So we switch the costume again to we go to our costume and confirm we want him seated in bed. So that's it. So he changes position. And then we can also dictate where we exactly we want him seated like that. So we get the position. How do you do that? You go to motion and go to the specific position. Where do you want him seated? You define the X and the Y coordinates that we want. And then so while he's seated, maybe you can even say a prayer. It's good to pray once you wake up or. Yon. Once he sits down. So yes, now we are still defining our process, our function. So what else do we want him to do? So we want him to move now out of bed and stand. Be able to get up to, out of the bed now and stand on the floor so that now he can move to the next place that we want him. To move so now we need to put the movement part so that he gets out of bed and stand. So how do we do that? So we can tell him to glide or to move, define the steps we need. So let's use glide this time. And then we want him to glide and stand. And also maybe change size so that once he steps down, he looks relevant to the background backdrop so that he maybe does not appear so small that we cannot see him or too big that we cannot see him. That he overshadows the, the backdrop. So I'm going to put now they change the size. So maybe I can change the size by 80. And then I glide to what position do we want him to glide? So maybe we can move him to another position like maybe 68 and negative 178 and see where he's going to be standing at that specific position. And then what does he say once he wake up? Maybe he says, thank you. Good morning. So yeah, once he wakes up, he can say good morning. 
So let's try and see if we define our function. So how do we do that? So we said once you create our function, define it. So we say the function is a group of codes or blocks of codes giving a specific instruction or task performing a specific task. So as we can see, this is our we had, we've defined our function which is wake up. So we've set the size of our character. We've told them where which position to sleep, to snore. We want an alarm to ring so that he wakes up. Once he wakes up, we need him to change costume and maybe sit down. And then we also need him to change costume again and stand up. So that one is also necessary. We missed that. So once he finishes to yawn, we need to make him now stand up. So we change costume again. To which one? So we come back here and see. So we need this one. Danny C so that is standing. So we go and choose the one that we want. Yes, so that is able to stand up and then get out of bed and say good morning before now we go to the kitchen. So we can try that and see if it's going to work. So how do we do that? We're going to use our events blocks and then we call our block now our function, which is wake up. So I'm only going to click on the flag and then the wake up process should happen because we've already defined it. Now we've called it. This is how you call your function. That's why we said you need to give it a name so that you're able to call it. So let's see once I click the flag what happens. Huh. So he's able to wake up and come to this different position. Now he's out of bed and we're able to see him here. So is the character too big? If it's too big, you just go to where we put the change size by 80, then you can reduce it maybe to 50 and see what happens. So we can try that again. So we're just going to click the flag. Good. So our character is able now to go through the process of waking up. So a function is now that is we've created a function wake up and we've been able to call it. So you just get the, the activity you want to happen and you feel you're going to be having this activity every now and then in your project. So you just create a function for it. You give it a name. Then you define the whole activity. How do you want it to be happening? So you'll be just calling the function when you need it and then it happens. So like the process of waking up, it's a continuous process. So if you're telling a story about your character, maybe just and we have the one, the two of the story and the three. You don't want to be putting the waking up process every time, writing all those blocks every time. You only need to write the blocks once, put them in a, a defined block or a named block, which is a function. So every time you're talking about your character waking up, you just call the function wake up and your character is able to wake up the way you want them to be able to wake up. So that's it. We can create another function. Maybe, yeah, so that our character is able to decide what they want to have for breakfast. So I can see a few questions. Maybe I can answer one or two before we continue. So Gito Secondary School, I can see you're present. Thank you so much. And we request you're, you're asking, is it possible to repeat initial tutorials? Oh yes, you can get all our webinars on Scratch or on Arduino. There are links, all the links that we've been sharing with you in Teams. Just go to Teams and then go to the webinar sessions. You'll be able to see all the sessions that we've had from the beginning and then you can go through them and get the details that you feel you missed out to be able to continue. So we can continue. 
So we can create another function so that it becomes, we understand it better. So I'm going to click on make a block. So first you need to think, what do you want your function to do? So that when you're, when you're creating the block, you know exactly what you want to create. So this time I want to create a, another function that shows the process of Danny deciding what he's going to eat. So all the time you decide when you, what you're going to have for breakfast, what you're going to have for lunch, what you're going to have for dinner, all those. So every time, for example, if it's a story or an animation and you're showing your characters are thinking on what they need to eat or they're deciding on which crops to grow or they're deciding on which games to play, if it's games time or games day or events, which kind of activities do they want to happen? So you can create functions to be, you just call them and that activity or that game is able to be played at that particular time that you're calling it. So in our case, we want to create another function to show the process of him deciding what he's going to eat for breakfast. So we create a block. So we go to make block. So we have to give our block, which is our function, a name. So this time, what do we call it? So we can call it meal or meals block function. So it's a function for deciding the type of meal that you want to eat or what you want to eat, deciding what to eat or meals. Yeah, so we just call it a meal. And then we want it to be a label again because we don't want it to be an input. It can, it can also be an input where we decide we're going to be eating a fish and ugali, bread and tea, all that. So it can be an input, but for me, I want it to be a label. So we can try a label. Then we can also try an input and see what happens. What is the difference? So I'm calling it mails, then I click OK. So here's our block. So as you can see in the my block category, I have two labels now. One for wake up, another one for meals. Then we are instructed to define meals. So what do we want to fall under meals? So the first thing we want to happen is we want to change our backdrop so that we stop being in the bedroom because we don't eat in the bedroom. We go either to the kitchen or we can even add another backdrop of uh, a dining area, sort of, or a place with a table where you can sit and eat. So, where is that? So, we can look for something else where we can decide on what to eat. Let me look for. So let's just pick that or we can even draw our own place with a table and a chair where our character is able to sit and eat. Yes, so first we, did, we change from the bedroom, we go to the kitchen where we can see the fridge. So the first thing we need to do is to define meals. So I click on Danny, which is our character. So one thing we need to do is first thing we want to switch the backdrop. So we click on switch backdrop and then we give the specific backdrop that we want. So we want him now to go to the refrigerator. So once they go to the to that different area, what do we want else to happen? So we can give them a position. Where do we want them standing? So we go to motion and we give a position. 
So we can let him stand somewhere there. And then we also give him a size. So we want him to be maybe 100% so that you can be able to see him like that. Then, so we need to define the size and the position where we want our character to stand. So we go with the position first. So this one, we read the X axis, which is negative 130. And then the Y axis, which is negative 48. Yeah. And then we give the size. So we want them to be which size so that it's relevant to our group. So we set it to size 100, yes, so that we, they're able to fit in our, they're able to fit in our backdrop. So once we give that, so we need to decide now what do we want to have for breakfast. So now we can have the conversations flowing. So maybe it's thinking. So he's asking what should he eat and then maybe he can think on what he really wants to eat. Then maybe he gets an idea on what to eat. So so maybe he decides to eat the cheesy puffs. So what do you expect to happen after this? So we need to broadcast this information. Remember the broadcasting of message? So we use broadcast, so we can call this one breakfast. So we want our character now to decide what to eat. And then once they decide what to eat, what they've decided to eat can appear and then we can see them enjoying the meal. So we need to add a, another sprite to show the food that they want to eat. And then now we call this food using the message, which is breakfast. So when I receive breakfast, that's when I show. And then so we want our what Danny is going to eat to show so that we can be able to see what they want to eat, what he has decided to have for breakfast. And we position it so that it comes and he's able to have it and eat it. So that's it. We can give it a, so we want it to show so that we can be able to see it. So that means when the flag is clicked, we don't want to see this food because at that time he'll be sleeping. So we have to tell it to hide and wait until he decides what to eat so that the food now shows. And you can even dictate the position that we want it to show so that it does, it does, it does not appear in the position where we do not want it. So we can give that specific position. So Let's go back to Danny and then we add to our code. We call now the meal function. Just the way we called the wake up, so we also do the same. We add the meal. So we can try that and see if it's going to work. So once I click the flag,
So that's how functions work. So just think about that task or that specific activity you want to do and you feel it's going to be repetitive or you're going to need it in your project in other parts of your project, then you make them functions and then you're able to call them every time you need it. So you just call your function after you've been able to define your function. So that's how functions work. Any question about functions or anything else in Scratch and we can be able to answer you or let us know the kind of project you're thinking to work around in Scratch so that you can be able to help you be able to implement it easily and very fast. So we've been able to look at the make block, which helps us to make our functions. And then once you click on it, we're able to create the different functions, either a label or it can be an input block, an input function that takes some input like the say block. And then you define it so that we're able to understand what your function is going to be doing and then give it a name so that you're able to call it. Decide how many inputs you're going to have in a function and what type of input inputs you're going to need in your function if you're working with a, an, an input type of a function. So we've looked at a, a different examples of function. We've been able to define a meal function on what to eat and a wake up function to show the process of waking up so that we're just able to call our function. We can even create a reset function. We've not looked at that. So yes, thank you so much. We can answer any questions.
Okay, that's a very interesting question. So you're asking why we did not take Danny to the field. So we just didn't finish. We can do that. So we just go back to scratch. And then now once we we back to we use this when the flag is clicked. So we've been able to define our two functions where we want Danny to wake up, then have a meal. So once they've, they're done having a meal, the next thing we want them to do is be able to move now out and go to the field. So that is very easy. So we're just going to continue from these two functions that we've created here. So we tell once this is done, once we've We've been able to wake up and then have a meal. We're just going, the next thing we're going to do now is shift and go to the field. So we just add that on this when the flag is clicked. So what do we want? We want after they're done with the meal, we switch back drop. So we tell Danny, to go to the plain field. So in the plain field, so maybe you can be able to tell us the game that he would love to play. So maybe you can say, I love football. And then, or first maybe you can say, he enjoyed the breakfast, so that was really good. Maybe the breakfast was really good. And then they can also say they go to the field. Now they want to go to the field. So let me clean my blocks so that we stop having them overlapping each other. So then you can say, I'm going to play. So that we make it flow. And then now we switch. Now we go to the backdrop of, let me put this, let me disarrange the block so that after the meal, he says that the meal was good, was good and that now he wants to go play so that now we switch the background, the backdrop to the plain field. So in our backdrops, we had the third one, which is the plain field. So we go back to Danny. So we want him to switch to the, go to the plain field and then now when they in the field we can have now because we've seen he loves playing football. I'm going to play so maybe we can add a ball so that we know what is our character going to play. So we can have a soccer ball here. So in our ball, so we tell our ball to keep hiding so that we don't want to see it. We only want to see it when Danny wants to go out play to play. So once we switch the backdrop, we broadcast a message. So we broadcast a message of new message. We call it football. So that's now we are able to use the message. So when I receive the message football, so when I receive football, the ball appears. So we go to looks and then we tell the ball to show. So every time you use hide, you must at some point use show so that your sprites are able to, to appear. So that your sprites are able to appear. So that's why we are telling it to show once we go to, once it receives the message, football. So yeah, let's see if that is going to work or what else can we add here? So we say maybe it's going, I'm going to play, then we switch, go to the field and we see the ball coming. 
And then maybe we can hear him saying that he loves playing football or he wants to become a footballer. Once. So you can say. Then the other thing, we don't need our cheesy puffs to appear, which the our character was eating. So we're going to tell them once they receive the same message that we've broadcast, our message is football. They're supposed to hide again because we don't want to see them in the field. So we tell them to hide. So that's it. So we're going to have once we wake up, we have a we have breakfast. We're going to go out to the field and then we're going to have a ball coming in the field and then we can say I want to be a footballer or we can even. So that's it. So you can add as many things as possible. We can even make him brush his teeth so we can bring in the toothbrush and all that. So that we can always add that. So for I just did a few. I, I just did an example so you can do all those things that you imagine in in the process of waking up. So let's try what we've done and see if it's going to work. Uh, thank you so much, Ngito. Secondary, I can see your question of uh, why Daddy did not brush his teeth after waking up. This was just a sample, a sample lesson that we had. And uh, maybe if you feel like adding that aspect of brushing teeth as a matter of hygiene, or going to the bathroom, taking a shower, or washing the face, feel free to add that. That is why we give you a sample to open up your mind for more ideas that you may feel that uh, is relevant to your project. So keep telling us the projects that you're working on, the challenges you're facing, so that you can see where to step in and help in your projects. You can type your questions in the ask question uh, in the live event Q&A section, so that you can get your questions and you can really give you feedback on this and thank you. And then uh, you also noticed that uh, there was food in the field. So that is what happens when you don't hide the food after after the after the action and you forget to hide the food can can also appear in the field. That is why debugging is very important. You're supposed to run your code severally, check where there is a bug, debug it, and ensure that it runs perfectly according to the project that you had in mind. As you can see the project now there is no food in the field, just Danny and the ball. Share with us your feedback, tell us how far you are with your project so that you can support and chip in where possible. Yes, even share what you're thinking that you can be able to create. So because we've been looking at how you can create stories using Scratch, how you can create animation using Scratch, how you can create games using Scratch, all those. So share with us what you're thinking and then we can help you 
develop it into a project or shape it into becoming a project? 